American agent quits his job to rescue siblings from an international child trafficking ring. Welcome back to Movies Explained. Today's film is a crime thriller from 2023 titled Sound of Freedom. The movie begins in Honduras, where a young girl named Rocio Aguilar is visited by a woman named Caddy Juarez, who expresses interest in Rocio's potential in the entertainment industry. Caddy wants to take Rocio to her agency's audition the following day. While they are discussing this, Rocio's younger brother, Miguel, enters and catches the recruiter's eye. The next day, their father Roberto takes the children to the audition at a motel room, bidding them farewell as they join other kids already there. Caddy instructs Roberto to pick them up the next day before closing the door. Inside, she has the children pose for pictures. However, when Roberto returns to pick them up, he is horrified to find the room empty and his children missing, despite searching the motel and surrounding streets. Months later in California, a man is found browsing a website featuring videos of trafficked children. Unbeknownst to him, a team of Homeland Security Investigations agents are monitoring his activity. As he uploads a video, the team quickly moves to raid his house. They arrest him and, upon searching the premises, discover a garage filled with children's toys and numerous files with details of his child victims. Back at their base, an agent reports to his superior, Special Agent Tim Ballard, expressing his decision to resign due to the emotional toll of witnessing the atrocities inflicted upon the children. Despite having apprehended 288 criminals involved in such activities, Tim faces the challenging reality that most of their victims are located outside the country, making rescue operations difficult. While writing the case report, Tim ponders deeply over the situation. He decides to confront Ernst Oshinsky, the man he'd recently apprehended in his cell. As the only staff member left in the building, Tim takes Ernst to a courtyard. To gain Ernst's trust, Tim carefully crafts a facade, pretending to share Ernst's criminal interests. They engage in a prolonged, alcohol-fueled conversation, after which Ernst, seemingly convinced of Tim's allegiance, returns to his cell. Back at home, Tim is visibly burdened by the deceit necessary for his role, a strain understood by his wife and children. The following day, he seeks and receives permission from his supervisor to extend his operation with Ernst, given a week to solidify Ernst's trust. Tim releases Ernst temporarily, promising to help erase his 30-year sentence in exchange for a child. After initial reluctance, Ernst agrees and arranges to meet his contact. Ernst presents Tim with a photograph of Miguel, the intended child. Upon confirming the handover for the next day, Tim dramatically unveils his ruse and rearrests Ernst, showcasing the lengths he'll go to in the fight against child trafficking. The following day, Tim and a team of officers strategically position themselves at the border, awaiting Ernst's contact. Upon his arrival, they carefully check his and Miguel's passports. Confirming his identity, Tim promptly arrests the man and approaches the car to speak with Miguel. The boy appears frightened, but Tim, speaking gently in Spanish, asks for his real name and takes him to the hospital for examination. The nurse, after a thorough checkup, confirms signs of recent abuse. In a quiet diner, as they sit down for a meal, Tim learns more about Miguel, discovering he is eight years old. He introduces himself as Timoteo, a name that intriguingly matches the one inscribed on Miguel's necklace, a cherished gift from his sister Rocio. This coincidence fosters a sense of connection between Tim and Miguel. As they talk, Miguel expresses his hope of finding Rocio. This conversation triggers a flashback, where Miguel recounts his harrowing experience. He describes the process of being trafficked, the fear and uncertainty he faced, and the chilling moment when he was purchased by Ernst's contact in Tijuana. This flashback provides a stark insight into Miguel's traumatic journey. In the present, a deeply emotional scene unfolds at the airport. Miguel and his father, Roberto, are finally reunited. The relief and joy in their embrace are palpable. Tim, who has been a silent witness to this poignant moment, informs Roberto that Miguel likely spent around three months in Tijuana. Reflecting on the profound anguish any parent would feel with a missing child, 
Roberto turns to Tim, acknowledging his role as a father too, and questions how one finds peace in such distressing situations. As the time comes for them to part ways, Miguel, in a gesture of deep gratitude and connection, offers Tim his necklace. This necklace, more than just an object, symbolizes the bond they have formed in their brief but impactful time together. In a crucial turn of events, Tim confronts Ernst's contact, leveraging the threat of extradition to a Colombian jail to extract vital information. He successfully obtains a detailed description of Caddy's face, which he promptly passes on to the Colombian police. Meanwhile, the narrative shifts to a harrowing scene involving Rocio. She is forcefully tattooed with a crown symbol on the back of her neck, marking her as property in the eyes of her captors. The distress intensifies as she is shown waiting in a bedroom, where a drunken foreigner's presence loomed over her, his rough hands reaching for her innocence. After the ordeal, a bruised and broken Rocio is depicted crying in a dirty bathtub seeking solace and singing to herself. Back at the Homeland Security office, Tim passionately pleads with his supervisor to assign him to Rocio's case, hoping to find her and bring her home. His supervisor initially resists, citing limited resources and concerns about Tim's emotional well-being. However, Tim's unwavering determination and the weight of responsibility he carries persuade the supervisor to agree. Tim's journey to rescue Rocio begins, his mission fueled by a mixture of compassion, determination, and the lingering scars of his previous cases. Upon landing in Cartagena, Colombia, Tim is met by Jorge, a local police officer. Jorge escorts Tim to a meeting with a former cartel accountant known by the moniker Vampiro. Having left his criminal past behind, Vampiro now dedicates himself to rescuing trafficked children. After confirming that Tim's intentions are noble, Vampiro agrees to assist in locating Rocio. Vampiro reveals that Caddy, the key figure in their search, was once crowned Miss Cartagena and is notoriously cautious and elusive in her trafficking dealings. To infiltrate her network, they devise a plan. Tim proposes creating a facade of a sex club, similar to one he knows of in Thailand, aimed at attracting the same clientele. To finance this sting operation, Tim suggests enlisting millionaire Paulo Delgado. He shares this plan with Vampiro and inquires if Vampiro knows anyone who can provide a significant number of trafficked children for their ploy. Vampiro then reconnects with an old contact, El Calacas, and arranges a meeting with Tim. In this encounter, Tim adopts the persona of a wealthy, inebriated individual aspiring to open an exclusive sex club near Cartagena. He challenges Calacas to supply at least 50 children for this establishment. Caught off guard by the magnitude of this request, Calacas confesses that fulfilling such a substantial demand exceeds his capabilities. However, this was precisely Tim's intent, to use Calacas as a bridge to Caddy. Meanwhile, Tim is getting yelled at on the phone by his supervisor, who claims that Tim hasn't saved one child despite the considerable resources expended. Tim is told to pack up and go home, but after he hears Vampiro's story about how he started saving trafficked children, Tim believes that God is telling him to do the same. Tim resigns from his position, despite being 10 months away from his pension, and continues with the plan. He manages to recruit Paolo to help his sting by relaying the ugly facts of the child trafficking industry and giving him a picture of Rocio. With the team assembled, they continue planning the sting together to be as convincing as possible. Calacas relays this big transaction to Caddy and other traffickers, and they're all invited to meet with Tim, Vampiro, and Paolo in Bogota. They talk business, and Caddy ensures that she can provide at least 50 children. As the operation approaches its peak, Tim receives crucial support. Confirmation from the U.S. Embassy in Colombia that they will monitor the raid, ready to provide backup if necessary. The team makes their way to a secluded resort on a private island, purchased specifically for setting up the raid. As the traffickers arrive, it becomes apparent that they have brought fewer than 30 children, not meeting the agreed number of 50. Despite this, the team plays along, with Caddy assuring that the remaining children will be delivered shortly. The traffickers introduce their lawyer, Carney, 
and the group seemingly enjoys their time at the resort while finalizing the transaction. While coordinating with Jorge to implicate Carne during the raid, Tim encounters Carne and his bodyguard escorting one of the children. Tim attempts to intervene and take the child under his care, leading to a heated confrontation. Carne refuses to relent, and the situation escalates dangerously when the bodyguard draws a gun on Tim. The tense standoff is diffused by Vampiro's timely intervention. As the rest of the children are brought to the island, the raid team swiftly moves in. In a calculated move to frame Carne as the informant, Tim and his team are also handcuffed amidst the chaos. After the raid concludes, Jorge informs Tim that they successfully rescued 54 children. However, the news is bittersweet, as Rocio is not among them. In a reflective moment, Tim and Vampiro, observing the rescued children at play, recognize the significance of the moment. They label the joyful sounds echoing around them as the sound of freedom, a poignant reminder of the impact of their mission. At the police station, a critical breakthrough occurs when Jorge extracts valuable information from one of the apprehended traffickers. The lead points to a notorious figure known as El Alacran, identified as the person who purchased Rocio. Jorge reveals that Rocio is likely being held in a jungle region near a rebel-controlled area of Colombia. Despite Jorge's reservations about the high risk of a rescue operation, Vampiro proposes a daring plan to infiltrate the area disguised as a doctor, a plan Tim readily supports. With Jorge providing fake credentials, they consult with actual doctors to prepare for their undercover mission into Alacran's camp. Before their departure, Jorge informs them that he can only safely transport them to the river and equips them with a GPS tracker to inject into their bodies, a grim precaution in case of their demise. The team makes its way to Nariño province, setting up camp by the riverbank. In a heartwarming moment, Tim sends a final text to his wife, bracing for the operation that will commence at dawn. As they prepare to part ways, Jorge offers Tim a gun but he declines, choosing to maintain his non-combative disguise. Tim and Vampiro then embark on their journey by boat. Their journey takes a dangerous turn when they encounter armed men who open fire, suspecting them of intruding. Tim and Vampiro manage to convince the men of their medical identity, but the captors stipulate that only one of them can proceed to Alacron's camp. Tim volunteers and is taken aboard their boat, leaving Vampiro behind. Meanwhile, Jorge, closely monitoring the situation, receives an alarming update. Tim is now isolated and navigating dangerously through enemy territory alone. After a grueling journey through the dense jungle and vast fields where enslaved individuals toil over coca plants, Tim reaches the heart of Alacran's camp. He engages Alacran in conversation, citing the need to vaccinate his people against a cholera outbreak, but Alacran's eyes, cold and reptilian, held no concern for his people's health. As Tim wanders through the camp, surveying the crowd and the bustling cocaine production, his attention is drawn to a group of children crushing coca leaves. Among them, he spots a girl with a distinctive crown tattoo on her nape. Recognizing her as Rocio, he calls out her name, and she turns around, confirming his suspicion. He finally found her. Tim approaches Rocio under the guise of a medical checkup and discreetly asks which house she's staying in. However, their interaction is abruptly interrupted by Alacran, who summons Tim to attend to his men. As night falls, amidst the chaos of Alacran and his men celebrating, Tim locates Rocio asleep in a cabin. He gently wakes her, but the trauma she's endured triggers her to scream. The noise catches Alacran's attention, prompting him to investigate. With quick thinking, Tim tells Rocio to follow his instructions, or Alacran will kill them both. Tim instructs Rocio to pretend the scream was due to a nightmare, while he hides under the bed. As Alacran arrives and menacingly advances towards Rocio, intent on striking her, Tim's protective instincts are immediately triggered. Driven by a profound sense of urgency to safeguard her, he confronts Alacran. This confrontation quickly escalates into a fierce and violent struggle, fraught with desperation and intensity. In the heat of the moment, 
a life-or-death battle unfolds, culminating in Tim fatally stabbing Alacron. With the immediate threat neutralized, Tim reassures Rocio, promising her safety and a return home. Together, they seize the moment of chaos and make their daring escape from the camp. Alarmed, he alerts his comrades to search the river for Tim and Rocio. Panic rippled through the camp. Alacron's men swarmed the river, searching for the pair that had vanished into the night. They found them just as Tim fired up a stolen boat, Rocio clinging to his arm. They managed to arrive on the riverbank where Vampiro and Jorge are waiting for them. As they prepare to leave, Alacron's men catch up and start shooting at their car. Amidst a frenetic and dangerous chase, they manage to narrowly evade the barrage of bullets, miraculously escaping unscathed. In the safety of their haven, Tim, in a gesture of deep connection and relief, returns the necklace he had received from Miguel to Rocio. This simple act symbolizes the closure of a harrowing chapter for both of them. Meanwhile, Roberto receives the long-awaited call that his daughter is safe, a moment filled with overwhelming emotion. The team reaches a hospital where Rocio, now safe and under medical care, awakens to find her father and brother at her bedside. The family is united in a tearful and tender embrace, a scene that encapsulates their enduring love and resilience. The movie draws to an end with a heartwarming scene of Rocio and her family returning home. In a poignant and joyful moment, Rocio is shown playing her bongo, her music echoing as a symbol of her regained freedom and happiness. Before the credits roll, we learn that the real Tim Ballard stayed in Colombia to help Jorge break up the trafficking ring before returning home to his family. He also helped the United States Congress adopt laws to increase international cooperation in child trafficking cases. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe for more videos.